The Braves four, the Blue Jays three as we go to the top of the ninth. Toronto at the bottom third of its order coming up. Borders, Lee, and Cole, or rather, uh, the pitcher Ward scheduled for Cito Gaston. And there's what Cito has available on his bench as potential pinch hitters. He already has sent Derek Bell into the on deck circle as Borders lines one to right. And Justice is there. One pitch and one out. Rafael Belliard is into the ball game for Atlanta at shortstop as they shore up their defense. Braves trying to take a two games to none advantage in the 1992 World Series. With Manuel Lee due, Derek Bell is the pinch hitter. Lee went one for three tonight with a single and a run scored. Bell hit 242 during the regular season with two homers and 15 runs batted in in 61 games. Reardon with a fastball that just missed outside. Ed Sprague has moved into the on deck circle to bat for the pitcher Ward. One ball and one strike. Jeff Reardon, Major League Baseball's all-time save leader, facing a man who hasn't appeared much in the postseason. Bell got into only two games without an official at bat in the LCS against Oakland. Reardon, at age 37, the oldest Brave, pitching in the postseason for his fourth team. Bell shoots it back in our direction. That ball was hittable there. He missed that pitch. Two balls and two strikes. The only appearance of Derek Bell in the ALCS was as a pinch runner. And as you saw, he didn't even pinch hit much during the regular season. That's out of play. First base side, still two and two. By pitching in the postseason for four different teams, Montreal, Minnesota, Boston, and now Atlanta, Jeff Reardon has tied Doyle Alexander's Major League record postseason appearances with the most teams. Bell laid off an off-speed pitch that was very close. It has certainly been an eventful night for home plate umpire Mike Riley. Payoff pitch. Fouled away. Another one just missed. When a hitter is on a pitch like that, they foul it straight back. So Derek Bell has just missed two fastballs from Reardon. Ball four. Low and away. Reardon went to the fastball and missed. And now the tying run is aboard at first base with one out in the top of the ninth inning. Bell with decent speed, seven stolen bases in only 61 games during the regular season. And now Ed Sprague to bat for the pitcher Ward. He was one for two with a single in the league championship series against Oakland. Both of his at bats in the playoffs were as a pinch hitter. Well hit to left field. To the wall, Deion Sanders. Home run, Ed Sprague. Off the bench with a pinch hit two run homer off Jeff Reardon to give the Toronto Blue Jays a 5-4 to lead. Homer for the Blue Jays this year. And is it ever a big one? Wow.
What a great moment for Ed Sprague as Devon White turned the bun and took a ball. Ed Sprague was involved in somewhat of a controversy this summer. As White bounces one down to first, Hunter slip, but gets the tag on White. Ed Sprague's wife, Kristen Babb Sprague, won a gold medal at the Summer Olympics in solo synchronized swimming. Obviously, it was a great moment for him. Unfortunately, she won the gold medal because of a judging error made by a judge from Brazil involving a competitor from Canada. Sylvie Frechette had the mistake in the judging not been made and the wrong score not punched in. Sylvie Frechette of Canada would have won the gold medal. But the mistake was made. They could not correct it. And Ed Sprague's wife won the gold medal. And that was the source of some controversy in Canada. There was no error in judgment on that home run. Clearly out of the ballpark. What a big moment in that young man's life. His dad, a pitcher for Oakland, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and Milwaukee. And certainly every Canadian is happy for Ed Sprague tonight. 5-4. Toronto has the lead for the first time tonight. You mentioned Ed Sprague, senior. He was on the Reds roster in 1972, but did not play in the World Series. Alomar pops up a bunt try. Lemke fields it. And that ends the inning. But the two-run homer by Sprague has given Toronto the lead. Lemke, the pitcher, and Nixon do up for Atlanta in the bottom of the ninth. I don't remember. It was something, something. The Nicoderm patch. Nicotine transdermal system. Yeah, it's called Nicoderm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the patch. Right, it's a patch. Nicoderm. A lot of people don't know about it. You know, maybe I'll ask my doctor. Nicoderm. It's a patch, huh? Yeah, it's a patch. Nicoderm. Derm. Derm. By prescription only. Some grown-up advice about breakfast. I don't care what your friends do. Eat. What's your hurry? You're not leaving this house. For all you adults who rush out without breakfast, why not try something new? Two words. Blueberry. The luscious new taste of Kellogg's Blueberry Pop-Tarts. Blueberries are our friends. With bigger, better blueberry flavor bursting in every bite. It's rectangular. They weren't kidding. They're good. The new taste of Kellogg's Blueberry Pop-Tarts. Real good, real fast. Like that. Someday you'll thank me. Wendy's spicy chicken. Yeah, it's different. Cause Dave's different. He's a rebel. They zig, he zag. Wendy's new spicy chicken fillet sandwich is a whole breast that's specially seasoned with Dave's own blend of pepper and spices. Dave, spicy? That's intriguing. What can I say? When you're hot, you're hot. Wendy's spicy chicken fillet sandwich. It's caused quite a stir. A man his age shouldn't be making spicy food. Hey, men. To all those who have made CBS America's most watched network, we say thank you. To all those who have made CBS America's most honored network, we say thank you. And to all those who are still searching for a network to call home, we say you're welcome. In the center of your screen, Kristen Babb Sprague. Gold medalist at the Summer Olympics for the United States in synchronized swimming. And tonight, the very proud wife of Ed Sprague. She's been wiping away tears as we watched her during the break between innings. Sprague's pinch hit two-run homer has given Toronto a 5-4 to four lead. As we go to the bottom of the ninth with Tom Hankey on, the closer of the Blue Jays, trying to save it. Mark Lemke to lead off. And the pitchers do. The on-deck circle is empty at the moment. Lemke one for three with an RBI single tonight. Hankey's first pitch is strike. In postseason play, Tom Hickey is 2-0 with three saves and a 1.65 earned run average. And encompasses all of his postseason experience. And you saw his numbers in this year's league championship series against Oakland. He is quickly ahead of Lemke 0-2. Alfredo Griffin, 
is into the ball game at shortstop. A pinch hit for Manuel Lee in the top of the ninth. In the dirt. This is what Bobby Cox has available to him on the bench, and he has already sent Lonnie Smith into the on-deck circle to bat for the pitcher, Jeff Reardon. There's Smith. Two and two. Ed Sprague still in the dugout. He wants to make sure it was a game-winning home run. <laughs> His heart must still be pounding. Oh, man. Mm. He hit only one home run during the regular season. He only appeared in 22 games. Just as Cabrera was an unlikely hero in Game 7 of the playoffs for Atlanta, Sprague an unlikely hero at the moment for Toronto. But they still must survive the bottom of the ninth. Lemke has battled off the 0-2 hook to a full count. Reardon played by long balls in the last couple of years of his career, and again tonight, Lemke bounced that one foul. That home run by Ed Sprague was only the second home run in postseason play. The only, only the second pinch hit home run in postseason play to take a team from losing to winning. The other one in the 1988 World Series game one. Dennis Eckersley giving up the two run homer to Kirk Gibson to win it for the Dodgers. Lemke, a shallow fly ball to left for Joe Carter. One out. And if the Blue Jays hang on and win this one, the performance of the bullpen tonight should not be overlooked. David Wells pitched an inning in two thirds without allowing a hit or a run. Todd Stottlemyre pitched one perfect inning. Dwayne Ward won perfect inning. And now Henke has retired the first batter he has faced. The last hit for the Braves came off David Cohn back in the fifth inning. David Justice with the RBI single for Bobby Cox. Cox has Lonnie Smith at the plate. Smith appeared six times in the playoffs against Pittsburgh. All six at bats as a pinch hitter, and he was two for six. He hasn't put the ball in play in three career at bats against Hakey. Well hit, but well fouled down in the Toronto bullpen. Not too many right handed batters put the ball in play and hit it hard against Hickey. Only one hit in the last 28 at bats for right handed batters in postseason play against Tom Hickey. 5 4 Toronto with one out of the bases empty in the ninth, and that hit Lonnie Smith. The fans boo, but certainly that's the last thing Tom Hickey wanted to do is put the potential tying run on base and bring the winning run to the plate. Tom Hankey did not hit a single batter during the regular season. Ron Gant comes in to run for Lottie Smith. And the plot thicken, thickens. Ron Gant with nine consecutive stolen bases in postseason play. Make that 10 for the stolen base last night for Gant. He's at first with one out in the bottom of the ninth. 5 4 Toronto. And the batter Otis Nixon, who is 0 for 4 in this ballgame. If you're Ron Gant at first base and you're thinking about running and you've got to assume that he is, then you want to pick a split finger fastball on which to run. So unusually, I would imagine he will wait for Nixon to get in the hole, either 0 1, 0 2, 1 2, or run on the first pitch. The first pitch is slapped to center field. 
And Devon White makes the catch. Two away in the ninth inning. The Blue Jays. One out away from evening the series and one apiece. Jane Fonda hoping for divine intervention for the Braves. They've already had one miracle this week. Wouldn't you know that Deion Sanders would come up? What it means most. He's one for three tonight. He singled and scored in the fifth inning. He's also walked and stolen two bases tonight. Gant, the pitch runner at first. Two outs, bottom of the ninth, 5 4 Toronto. And as Hanky eyed Ron Gant at first base, Sanders backed out. Olerud is holding Gant on, and at the other corner, Kelly Gruber is all over the third base line. Prevent a ball being hit down to the left field corner. the end of the bat a cue shot toward the Toronto dugout it's one ball and one strike certainly a tough task for Sanders he's been dividing his time the last couple of months between football and baseball and as a result tonight's start is just his third for Bobby Cox in the last 42 Braves games he hasn't had many swings lately period but particularly not against the 95 mile an hour type fastballs of a pitcher like Hanky. The 1 1 pitch. Chopped foul. And now the Braves are down to their final strike in game two. I think you can look for Gant to be running here. There is a reluctance to run. When if you're thrown out, that's the last out. I think that's the reason that Gann hasn't tried to steal up to this point. But with the count one and two, if I'm Bobby Cox, I send him right now. Will Hanky come with a fastball or fork ball? It was the fork ball, and Sanders got a piece of it to stay alive at one and two. <laughs> Toronto five, Atlanta four. Two outs, Ron Gant, the runner at first, in the bottom of the ninth. And he draws a throw. incredible silence here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in anticipation of the one two pitch here it is and again Sanders just got it off the end of the bat toward the Blue Jay dugout to stay alive he has fouled off some very very difficult splitters from Tom Hinkey and he'll probably get another one Two pitch. Low and in. Two balls and two strikes. If Sanders can keep the Braves alive, Terry Pendleton would bat next.
Now the 2-2 pitch. Slapped away. And Dion has managed to get a piece of the fourth ball and the good fastball from Hankey. This will be the eighth pitch to Deion Sanders. With Gant running, it's ball three. And Borders did not attempt to throw to second with the ball in the dirt. So now the tying run is in scoring position with two outs, and Sanders has battled to a full count. Now Kelly Gruber, who was on the line, gets off the line because a base hit ties the score. You don't want to protect against the double in this situation. Olerud is more on the line. He should be toward the fatter part of the field. Gruber is toward the fatter part of the field, moved off the line. There's no sense in protecting against a double here. With that stolen base, the Braves have tied a World Series record. Five stolen bases by one team in a nine-inning game. And now they'll talk it over with the ninth pitch up coming to Deion Sanders. Because if Hinky retires Sanders, there will be five stolen bases in a losing effort. I think I would rather challenge Deion Sanders than Terry Pendleton. is a terrific at bat by Deion Sanders. This pitch pitch just missing low. The splitter. And now Terry Pendleton's up there. Much more experience. And remember, he led the National League in hits with runners in scoring position this year. A 387 batting average. And here it is. Led all the major leagues to Pendleton. Lou Whitaker of Detroit was second, and the Blue Jays' Roberto Alomar fourth. So Pendleton will come up with the tying run at second, the winning run at first, at excellent speed on the base paths, with Gant, the runner at second, and Sanders at first. Galen Cisco out to the mound. Certainly, the Blue Jays will sink or swim here in the bottom of the ninth with Tom Hankey. What makes Pendleton so difficult in these situations is his ability to hit any pitch. He can dig a ball off the ground. He can hammer it helm and high, outside, inside. Great plate coverage for a little man. Toronto leads 5-4. to four. They took the lead on a pinch hit two-run homer in the top of the ninth by Ed Spray. First and second with two down for Atlanta in the bottom of the ninth, and Pendleton with a little pop-up. Kelly Gruber in the foul ground. He has it. And the Blue Jays have even this series at one win apiece. Ed Sprague, the unlikely hero tonight. His wife won a gold medal earlier this summer. And tonight, Ed Sprague won over the hearts of every Canadian. The final score in game two of the World Series. The Blue Jays five, the Braves four. We'll come back. Interviews with Pat O'Brien and Jim Cott in just a moment. Pat O'Brien back at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Kelly Gruber with the final R, final out and a chop, 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 almost I told you so motion there to the Atlanta Braves fans. And the fans are stunned here as they exit for the parking lot in a thriller. They lose to Toronto. Toronto's obviously first World Series win. Atlanta's first loss here in Atlanta, 5-4, to four, the final score. And our 
MVP of the game, of course, is Ed Sprague, who began the season as a triple-A ball player in Syracuse, and he's standing by right now uh, with Kitty Cobb. But before we do that, let's say that Chevrolet will donate $1,000 in his behalf to the Special Olympics. If we got that out of the way, let's get on to Kitty and Mr. Sprague, fellas. tonight and swung at that first pitch like you said I know I'm gonna get a fastball I'm gonna rip at it first one I see I was watching you can't hear this that first pitch the right handers and he'd been he'd been coming out with a fastball and then once he got ahead he'd you know he'd go to the slider so I just said uh Rance Mullinix made he just told me hey make sure he gets the fastball down to you and I just said uh look for something I can stay over is that what you guys do on the bench? I know you have your the trench patrol or whatever it is with you and Derek Bell. So you you look Forget forward to reward. Yeah, <laughs> you look forward to times like that when you have to go up and swing the bat. Well, that's what we're here for. You know, someone's got to play our role. And uh, you know, Derek had a big at bat getting the walk. He battled off some tough pitches, and he gets on and uh, you know gives me a chance to do something. I was just looking for a ball to drive. This seems to be a different Toronto team from what I've seen in the past. You you fellas have not been swept in a series all year, but. Even in games like this late where you're behind, there is a certain confidence about this team. Yeah, well, you know, we came from behind off accuracy, and I think that really built our confidence, especially in postseason play. We hadn't played real well in the past. But, uh, you know, this team, with the bats that we got with Robbie and, and Devo and Joe and some guys that can run, you're never really out of it. You know, you get a guy on, he can steal. And if you're, you know, you got a chance and you get uh, Joe and Dave up in situations where they hit the ball in the ballpark, uh, you know, you're really not out of any games. All right, let's take a look at that. Uh, Home run that Ed Sprague hit right now. Low fastball that he got from Jeff Reardon. And uh, even though we're not getting a first-hand look at it right here, you can remember vividly. And uh, what what a night for the, what a year really for the Sprague family with your wife winning a, a gold medal. Yeah, you know, I'm real proud of her. She did a great job. Uh, you know, she was kind of the underdog when she went over there. And, and she, uh, you know, she proved everybody wrong. And, and uh, she had a great swim, and you know I'm really happy for her. And it was her time, and now she's retired. And, and uh, now it's your time. <laughs> now it's my All right, time. and the Blue Jays' time. They go home tied at one. Let's go back to Pat O'Brien. A gold medal for his wife, and a golden moment for him. Once again, the final score of the game, uh, game, game two. Toronto Blue Jays five, the Atlanta Braves four. Join us again on Tuesday night at eight o'clock Eastern time for Game Three of the World Series from Sky Dome in Toronto. Steve Avery will take the mound for Atlanta. Toronto will counter with Juan Guzman. CBS Sports coverage of Game 2 of the 1992 World Series is brought to you by Mary and Merrill Dow Incorporated, makers of the new Cardism CD, new Great Grain Cereal from Post, and by the Heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. You've been watching the 1992 World Series on CBS Sports. This almost became the night that they put the Rob back into Roberto. Instead, an obscure catcher is a hero, obscure no more. Oh, Canada, here we come, not of that one. These unofficial moments in our national pastime are brought to you by the official airline of Major League Baseball. United. Come fly the friendly skies.